Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me from wherever you're calling in. My name is Thomas Herbst. I'm a volcanology student at the University of Missouri. And today we're going to be talking about the controls on volcanic eruptive behavior and the role crystals play in the explosive effusive transition. Volcanic systems associated with subduction zones, like for example, Mount St. Helens, have the ability to switch eruption styles, making their behavior very difficult to predict. So to begin, we have to ask what drives an eruption? And the answer is overpressured gas. And a magma's ability to release this gas controls its eruptive behavior. Its release is dependent on how the magma deforms. In other words, it's rheology. So to set up our problem, I made a compilation from nearly 40 volcanoes of published permeability and porosity data from natural effusively and explosively erupted products. And notice we have three distinct clusters. Low porosities are characterized exclusively by effusive data, such as lava flows and domes, while there's a heavy concentration of explosive products at high porosity and permeabilities, permeability being a measure of how efficient gas can flow through a medium with a transition zone in between where the data overlap. In this study, we propose an explanation for the following. If these eruptions are driven by gas overpressure, which can be released through development of permeability, yet surprisingly the least permeable magmas often erupt effusively, what mechanism can facilitate this efficient outgassing at such low porosities? And why do explosive eruptions still occur given their samples high permeability? There lacks a comprehensive study on how crystals affect permeability porosity, certainly so for crystal rich magmas, and the controls on the eruption transition and its boundaries remain poorly constrained. But by studying outgassing mechanisms as a function of crystal content, we can determine what role crystals play in controlling this transition. So for the purposes of this talk, I'm only going to be addressing how our findings contribute to the global data set, not the experimental methods themselves. If you are interested in those details or my references, I have a YouTube link down here in the bottom uh, with my full talk from GSA. In these main figures of permeability and porosity, the label crosses are data from this study. Closed and open symbols represent effusive and explosive data for which crystal content was known respectively. And these have been grouped by crystal content, each with their own respective color. Each bin of crystal contents was then fitted using a power law relationship. Now, if we compare effusive versus explosive data for a single bin of crystal contents, for example, the high crystal contents here in red, we can see that effusively erupted samples have lower porosities than their explosive counterparts. But we have yet to answer why explosive behavior occurs in the first place, despite these samples having high porosity permeabilities. And we propose the key to explaining explosive potential lies not in the explosive data, but rather the percolation curves for the effusive eruptions. And here we can see there is a permeability threshold approximated by the curves for the effusive lavas. At this permeability, outgassing proceeds rapidly enough that further permeability development reaches a ceiling. In contrast, explosively erupted products plot at lower permeability and were unable to reach the permeabilities necessary to outgas efficiently. The transitional zone which contains products of both eruption styles is bounded by curves similar to the kozeny karman fits. This delineates a critical permeability above which magmas no longer pose explosive hazards. Magmas can reach this permeability threshold either by a rapid increase in permeability due to fracturing or a decrease in porosity due to bubble collapse or collapse of internal pathways. Samples with high permeability and porosity could still erupt explosively because they fail to reach the very high permeability threshold. Our findings imply that this transition zone can be modulated by minor changes in crystal content due to competing effects of viscous and brittle behavior as this magma traverses this zone until it reaches a critical permeability. And intermediate crystal contents at about 50% crystals characterizes those magmas most likely to alternate eruptive behavior. Of course, an ascending magma is a very dynamic system capable of adjusting its crystal content. And for the first time, we provide a comprehensive model of permeability as a function of crystal content. And if we project permeability curves based on our model, just within the transition zone, we can effectively map a magma's journey in the conduit and see how more or less crystals would affect its ability to outgas directly affecting its eruptive behavior. 
And the point is these interpretations emphasize the importance of characterizing the physical states of magma chambers, including the crystal contents and potential for gas storage. These interpretations could then provide a process-based framework for applying this information to eruptive hazard assessment. Thank you for your time and please feel free to reach out with any questions.